Good afternoon. My name is John Young and I am the freshman sophomore counselor at Freeburg Community High School. And I am just going to post a recording here of our eighth grade parent night that was held at 6 p.m. on Monday, February the 22nd. Um, this informational session is usually geared towards the transition into high school for students um, who are currently in eighth grade um, to provide some information um, about the registration process, extracurriculars, graduation requirements, post-secondary planning, um, and scheduling for ninth grade. So I am going to kind of go through what we went through last night. Um, for those of you, I'm going to try to do it quickly. So this isn't a huge and a long recording, but I will tell you this numerous times. Um, if you have any questions, please never hesitate to reach out to me here at Freeburg High School. Um, phone number 618-539-5533 or my email address, which is young, Y-O-U-N-G at FCH77.org. Um, hopefully all of you received a packet a blue folder um, with some information in it. Uh, so I'm gonna hit on a couple things in that packet and then I'll go through my presentation and slideshow. Um, first thing, if you're looking at the packet that your children brought home, on the right-hand side is a, a stapled together um, stack of forms that talks a little bit about registration. If your child attends either Freeburg grade school or Smithton grade school, um, you can start the process sometime in May by logging into their teacher's account. You'll have the ability to then to transition them and transfer them to Freeburg High School without changing your account for the grade school as well. If your child doesn't attend Freeburg grade school or Smithton grade school, um, we will create an account for them here later this spring and you will get an email generated from teacher's, which is our student management system, um, sometime in late April that you can then log in and again start the registration process for your child. You'll do a few things online at that point in time. And then in the first week of June, so June 1st, 2nd, and 3rd, you'll see this on this um, front page on the right that has 2021-2022 um, school year information. Um, you'll bring in the necessary paperwork to register your child. If you flip that page over on the back, it lists um, the items you will need at that point in time, including proof of residency, um, your own identification, identification information for your children, and then some medical requirements. The next page talks a little bit about um, if you're registering another child. And then the last page of that, two pages of that packet are a form we'd like for you to fill out just as far as all of your contact information so we can make sure it's updated in teacheries. And then if your child is gonna take either PE or weights as a ninth grader, um, the PE uniform ordering process. So back to the third part, or I guess the fourth part on the back of that front page when they talk about medical information. Um, to enter ninth grade, you have to turn in all of that paperwork um, that was listed on the form, plus your child has to have a ninth grade physical. On the physical form, which is in the second page or packet on the right hand side of the folder, they have to have a dental exam form also, which is stapled in there. And then they need to turn in the emergency contact information, um, which is the yellow sheet that's stapled in that second packet. Um, just to note a couple things about the physical, it must be completed on this form, even if not um, by an Illinois doctor, um, but it does need to be completed on this form. Same with the dental information. If for some reason um, you have a situation where you've just gotten a dental exam for your child and so they're not due for another one within your insurance until after school begins, you can take this form, your dentist can fill it out and you can still turn it in even if it was prior to this date. Um, the physical needs to be completed um, between now and the start of school. Um, again, if you have an updated physical, you can turn that one in, um, but it needs to be done on this form. If it doesn't isn't done by June the 1st, it can be done anytime over the summer and you can turn in the paperwork in the high school office at that time. Um, the last two forms in that packet, the yellow form is for our school nurse to keep on file in case your child has some medical situations that we need to be aware of and our teacher, our computer system would go down, she would have this information to reference. And then the last part is just prescription medication. If your child takes prescription medication at school, we have to have an order signed by a doctor um, and they will fill out this paperwork so that the school nurse can administer any prescription medicine at that time. Um, the last packet on that right-hand side of the folder as you're looking at it, um, talks about extracurricular contact information. Typically, we have an open house event where students are able to walk around, get to see um, some of the clubs and organizations, athletic programs that we have here at Freeburg High School. Unfortunately, um, due to the pandemic, that's probably not going to happen this spring. So we wanted to get that information out to whatever way was possible. So again, you'll see on this form um, in the spreadsheet, uh, the head coach's name, the sport that they coach, 
and then their email address. And you'll also see that for music, for FFA, and then other clubs and organizations where you can also flip over to the back of that page. Um, what I would tell you to do is nothing at the moment. You don't need to worry about reaching out to these coaches today, tomorrow, next week, if your child is interested in athletics. But I would say sometime late April, early May, it might be worth sending the coach an email and say, hey, uh, my name's John. John is interested in, in playing soccer, running cross country, playing golf, um, playing basketball next year, playing football, whatever it might be. Um, coach, do you have any summer workouts that, that he could attend? Um, the coach will definitely put you on their mailing list at that point in time and reach out to you and give you whatever information you need so that um, your child can participate in those off-season workouts during the summer. Um, as far as the extracurricular clubs and organizations, those aren't anything that probably could, um, sponsors are going to have going on over the summer, but we really just wanted you to make, be aware of um, what we have to offer and who is in charge if your children are interested next year. We would encourage them to get involved without question, and at the start of next year, um, reach out to these individuals if it's something that they want to participate in. The rest of this packet you'll see it has some information about FFA, um, and the FFA Alumni Association, which you can also find their, their contact information on the front sheet. Um, they do have monthly meetings. So if your child is interested in agriculture or FFA, we would encourage you to get involved in the um, Ag Alumni Program and the FFA program as a whole. Um, it's a great program. The parents really drive the process and it's great to be involved in. Um, the next pa page in that is the Midget Athletic Booster Club. If your ch children are gonna play any sports, you're automatically um, involved in the Midget Athletic Boosters. They also have monthly meetings. Um, you can reach out to Ms. Carla Williams to find out when those meetings are being held. If you'd like to get involved, they do all sorts of great fundraisers for athletic programs here. They run the concession stands um, and really help our sports programs be as successful as they are. And then the final um, form in that is for the Music Boosters Association. Again, like the other two clubs, they have regular meetings that you can attend. Um, and, and really kind of as the form explains, supports our music program to a high level. Um, if you're interested in joining those meetings, if your children are interested in music, I would encourage you to get involved. Um, you can reach out to Mrs. Ann Proctor or Mr. Goss, our band director, and find out more about what they have going on over the summer and into the school year. Um, so now we're going to kind of move on to the, the rest of the presentation, which would be on the left-hand side of your folder. I am going to present my screen um, to you so that we can go through the actual presentation that I gave on Monday night. Um, like I said, I'll try to, to keep it short and sweet, um, but oh, that's not what I wanted to do. Sorry. Two things at once, huh? Um, all right, so now here is our presentation. Um, sorry, I didn't reset it last the meeting last night. All right, so first is welcome to the class of 2025. This will be the graduating class of 2025 at Freeburg High School. So welcome, thank you for your time. Um, our agenda, like I said, we're gonna review some of the things in your material or your folder, which I've already done. Um, talk about graduation requirements, college admissions requirements, then some um, course recommendations. And at the end, obviously this meeting, we won't have any questions and answers. We've covered the full content on the right-hand side with those packets. But again, if you have any questions about that process, if you have questions about the online process, I would encourage you to reach out to Mr. Jeff Alt or Mr. Sean Nipper, who are our technology department. They can help with that. If you have questions about the paperwork you need to provide to the school, you can reach out to Mrs. Jill Jung. She's our um, high school principal. And if you have questions about your child's medical concerns as they roll into high school, um, things like that, you can reach out to uh, Ms. Courtney Travis. She is our school nurse. So now we'll talk a little bit about the paperwork on the left-hand side of your folder. Um, we'll start with the page at the back that starts with graduation requirements from Freeburg High School 2021, 22, 22 school year. So these will be the graduation requirements your child will be expected to meet to graduate from high school. They need to earn 24 credits um, before within their four years of high school. We offer seven classes a day at three and a half or with a half credit per class per semester. So students can earn up to seven credits a full year if they take a full schedule and then earn 28 credits overall throughout high school. Um, what that does is that builds in four extra credits to meet graduation. So students can take four years of study hall at Freeburg High School and still graduate on time, assuming they're passing all their classes. What it also does is it builds in support. Inevitably, there's a student that struggles in a, a class or another and may fail it. And so it gives them the opportunity to make up that credit later in high school without having to go to the summer school route or come back for an extra year. Um, a little bit about our grading scale. We use a 5.0 grading scale. 
um, at a, a rate of 90% for an A, 80% for a B, 70 for a C, and 60 for a D. Um, we do have weighted classes for GPA purposes in English, math, science, and social studies, but we do not offer any weighted classes for ninth graders. So that's nothing that you'll need to worry about for next year. Um, something else to note is this incoming class, along with a couple others in high school, we will no longer be ranking students against each other. We've found that that is uh, beneficial to our students in the fact of not only getting admitted to college, but definitely for scholarship opportunities when they aren't being compared to their peers. Um, they're being evaluated on their success and their transcript alone. So graduation requirements, as you'll see on the top of this sheet, all students must take and pass four years of English. If they don't pass an English class, it's something they do have to retake either in summer school or during the semester. Um, students have to take three and a half years of PE um, unless they have an, a waiver on file. For ninth graders, the only way to waive out of PE at this time is if they are in a full year of band. Um, all of our other students will take a, a semester of PE as a ninth grader. Um, it's over on the other side, but the other semester opposite of PE will be a semester of health. Um, to graduate from high school, you also need three years of math, including a class in algebra and a class in geometry. You'll need two years of science. Any science classes will suffice in that case, whether it's general science or biology or an ag science, all of those meet that requirement. And then you have to take and pass three years of social sciences, a year of U.S. history, which all students take as a sophomore, a semester of government and a semester of contemporary U.S. history, which is taken as a junior, and then a semester of senior seminar, which is taken as a senior. And then that personal finance class, which we'll talk a little bit about later, but it can be met in four different ways and can be taken from sophomore through senior year. Like I said, all ninth graders should take a semester of health and driver's education classroom is also required. Um, and I will talk about that as well at the end. A little bit in the next portion is just about four-year college requirements. This is if a student's interested in going directly to a four-year university after high school. Um, they need to take and pass four years of English, three years of math, typically at Algebra 1 or higher level, so Algebra 1, Algebra 2, and Geometry, um, three years of Social Studies classes, um, so that can be met by the two and a half years we have built in, U.S. History, Government, Contemporary History, and Senior Seminar. Um, depending on what classes students take for that personal finance requirement, it could meet that as well. There are some that do and some that do not. Um, three years of lab sciences, which is different than the two years of sciences required to graduate. Um, lab sciences are going to be include things like physical science, biology, chemistry, environmental science, and in some cases, ag science. It depends a lot of times on the university and maybe the program students are interested in. But you will need three years of sciences to, to go directly to a four-year university. And two years of fine arts, foreign language, or selective vocational electives. Really, that's going to depend on the school. Um, and the program students are interested in getting into if we're talking about a four-year university. Um, I might have mentioned this earlier, and I'm sorry if I did, um, but a four-year university would be places like SEMO, Murray State, McHenry, St. Louis University, University of Illinois. They all have different requirements, but that's what we're looking at when we talk about a four-year um, university admissions directly. In. If a student's interested in going into community college first or into a trade school, these requirements, these admissions purposes will still work. Um, but a lot of times they're going to be trade schools are going to be more geared towards what the students have taken in the vocational shop. Um, in the community college, the requirements are going to be um, graduating from high school and then taking some placement to see what level they're at. Um, back to the, the fine arts, foreign language, selective vocational. Like I said, it's going to depend on the school. One thing you see on this list that you didn't see on the graduation requirement is foreign language. At this point in time, students are not required to take a foreign language to graduate from high school at Freeburg Community High School. So um, that is not something they have to worry about if the goal is just to graduate from high school. But there are some four universities that require a foreign language. Um, no questions asked. You have to have a minimum of two years of a foreign language to get admitted. Um, every year we get asked, well, can't art count as a foreign language? It does not. Um, foreign language is a foreign language. Right now all we offer is Spanish. Art is its own standalone um, category when you look at fine arts for admissions purposes. So again, that's not something that's going to come around the bend today, but it's something I would encourage you and your children to familiarize yourself with as you move forward. Next part, again, this is for students or for parents and students who are interested in athletics and possibly pursuing athletics after high school. You'll see this in the bottom of that sheet that we have in the left hand side of your folder. Um, I would just familiarize yourself with the NCAA eligibility center. Um, students not only have to be able to participate athletically, but they also need to meet the grade um, academically. 
They need to have 16 core classes in English, math, social studies, science, and foreign language. You notice they aren't counting business or art, family consumer science, shop, PE, in this. They're just counting those classes. Um, that doesn't mean that your students shouldn't take the other classes, but for the NCA purposes and their admissions purposes, they're looking directly at this. Um, they have a GPA minimum, but again, it's something I'd encourage you to start looking at if that's something your children are interested in. Um, we will have discussions about it. We will have informational sessions about it, but again, it's something to start thinking about now if you are interested or if your child is interested in pursuing athlete, athletics post high school. So now we talk a little bit about the freshman schedule. That'll be the other two forms on that side, the yellow sheet um, and the um, informational sheet. All ninth graders have to take English, have to take a math class, have to take science, have to take a semester of health and a semester of P, um, PE unless they're in marching band. And then they'll take a semester of health and a semester of some other elective. And then they'll take a full year of band. Um, and then they'll have three electives if they are not in band, um, if they're in band, um, they'll really have two and a half electives because the health and the, the other elective requirement. So that's what it should be. It should be the class of 20, 20 or the year of 21, 22, not 2021. Um, I forgot to change that on the presentation. Um, electives, when people ask about electives, what do we have to offer? We have social studies classes, we have fine arts. Students sometimes take additional science classes, family consumer sciences, um, which some parents know as home ec. Um, foreign language, which we offer Spanish at this time, business and computers, industrial arts or shop classes. Um, we do offer study hall, like I mentioned earlier, and then we do have a full ag program. So any of those classes can be considered electives. The ag program and the ag sciences can also fulfill that science requirement we discussed earlier. When you start thinking about choosing electives, consider your child's abilities, what they're interested in. It always is better to take something they're interested in, what they're interested in doing after high school. Hey, if I'm interested in to be a welder, it's probably a good idea to take some classes down in the shop. Um, if I'm interested in um, you know, pursuing a, a career in computer programming at some point, I'd like to take classes in technology and programming. Um, so, and then also just those requirements are for admissions into a program that your child might be interested in post high school. More things, just a couple things to note. Some of our courses do have fees associated with them. Um, and so at the end, I'll show you where our school website is. You can get our course planning handbook and you can see the fees. Our fee um, program is that all fees must be paid um, prior to students being eligible to participate in extracurriculars. So that's sports, that's things like homecoming. So just something to note um, as you move forward. And then the schedule change policy, uh, this isn't something new for you for you guys, but we will, we will make schedule changes, um, but we will only make them up till the day school starts. Once school starts, we will no longer change students' schedules, so they can no longer decide, well, I'd rather take current events than geography, or I'd rather drop um, intro to business and take study hall. Um, that's not the case anymore at this point in time. Once school starts, the schedule is set for the semester. Also something to note, um, we aren't going to change schedules because I want a different lunch so I can be with my friends, or I don't think I like this teacher, I'd like to change my schedule for those purposes. Those, those changes cannot be made either. Some additional supports. Um, we do have what's called an academic lab. It is a study hall, it's a guided study hall. So a traditional study hall has 35, 40 students. One um, adult just kind of checks them in and then lets them do their own work at their own leisure. Um, the academic lab has usually under 10 people, has a teacher and a, a paraprofessional in the room um, to help students with the content, make sure they're organized, make sure they're studying for tests, make sure they're getting assignments turned in. So it's a supported study hall for those students that might need a little bit of extra oomph during the day, maybe aren't as successful when they're working outside of school so that they are efficient um, within the school day. It is scheduled um, every day um, and it would be picked as one of the electives that a student might choose. We also um, service IEPs and 504 plans. For those of you whose children have an IEP, we will meet sometime later this spring at your respective grade schools to, um, to go over your stu student's IEP, a transition plan to high school, and really talk about what services we need to provide for them to be successful. Same with 504s. Those meetings will probably happen in May. Um, we'll reach out to you, schedule something so we can transition that 504 to high school just like we would with the IEPs. And then the last thing is the Chromebook. Um, every student will be given a Chromebook and um, 
it is their tool to use. It's an educational tool. We encourage them to use it for educational purposes um, because it was a financial commitment for the district and we thought it could enhance the educational opportunities for our students. Um, so we ask that they take care of it, that they use it for educational purposes, not just to surf the internet, um, because they do have all the access. It's something they're gonna take home and they're gonna use at home. Um, so hopefully they're using it for, for those you know appropriate reasons. If not, to note, um, all of these devices are run through our filter. And so uh, they are monitored at full time. Um, if something has been done, being done on the Chromebook that shouldn't be done, we will be notified within the school. Um, we also have the ability to shut them off at a certain point in the evening. Usually it's late so that students aren't up all night on the computer saying they're doing work, but maybe they're not doing as much work as they, they would um, claim to be doing um, and therefore aren't getting the sleep that they need. The last thing is just about Wi-Fi access. Um, if you don't have Wi-Fi access, if you have spotty Wi-Fi access, please let us know. Um, we can definitely figure out a way to help out in that. If you have um, hardwired internet and a desktop computer, all of the schoolwork done on the Chromebook can be done on another internet-based device, whether it's a hardwired computer, a desktop, um, a tablet, and, and a phone, any of those things, it can be done as well. But we obviously issue them to devices um, so that they at least have one tool to use. If you have Wi-Fi issues though, like I said, don't hesitate to let us know so we can figure it out. We'd much rather figure that out early in the school year um, than be two or three months in and realize that um, some of the stuff your child was being asked to do, they couldn't access because of Wi-Fi. Course placement, this year was a little different because we didn't have a placement test. So we used recommendations from the grade school teachers, um, past academic records, and then just the student's interest. You know, that's gonna come more into to play with you. So if you look, we've made a recommendation for English, um, highlighted the, the student's form for either English 1 or English 1 Accelerated. The English 1 Accelerated is the faster paced version of English. Um, we asked for a teacher recommendation and past success in language arts. Um, the majority of our students will take English 1, both meet college admissions requirements um, and graduation requirements. Uh, math is a little more complex because there are four options for ninth graders. We've also made a suggestion, uh, um, a recommendation um, on math. If you look, um, the most accelerated math class we offer is geometry. To, for students to get into geometry, they needed to have a teacher recommendation and pass success in math. Um, typically, we're looking at about the top 20% of math students in the incoming class to go directly into geometry. If students didn't get a geometry recommendation, um, still would like to attempt to test into geometry, we have an algebra proficiency test that we're willing to offer. Um, I'll talk a little bit about it later, but I would encourage you to reach out to me either via email or phone to sign up, and then I will notify you when I schedule it at the respective grade schools, um, and we'll see where we go from there. The more mo majority of our ninth graders are going to be scheduled for Algebra 1. Um, it's got a, students would have a teacher recommendation for Algebra 1, as we talked about earlier. It meets all your graduation requirements, college admissions requirements. Um, the next math class is double block algebra. So how this looks is it's two hours a day, not back to back, but usually separated. It's still covering the same algebra content as in algebra one, um, but it's a little more supportive. The second day the students go back to the same math teacher, maybe they review the lesson, maybe they have extra time on a test. Um, you know, maybe they're reviewing some foundational math skills to kind of enhance their math ability overall. Um, one thing to note that if a student does take double block algebra, it does fulfill one of the other elective requirements. They do get credit for the second hour as well, um, but it does limit the number of actual electives that they can take during the school year. Um, and then the final class that we're considering offering next year is pre-algebra. This is for the student that maybe isn't ready for algebra content, has really struggled maybe with math this year in the virtual setting. Um, it is not, you know, um, had a lot of success with it. Um, this would be a place where we can go back and pick up on some of those foundational schools that they can then have success moving forward throughout high school. Algebra proficiency test, like I said, reach out to me. There's my email address, my phone number, let me know. I'm looking at the week of March 8th through 12th to come out to the grade schools and offer it if students are interested in it. Um, like I said, just let me know and I would be happy to, to test your students. Um, so you know about this test. It's the semester exam for our algebra class here at Freeburg High School. So it's first semester exams. So it's what we cover in the first half of the year um, to see if, again, if students are, are truly prepared to, to not only start in geometry, but skip a full year of algebra and then take algebra two as a junior or as a sophomore. Science placement, again, we've made a recommendation. A lot of that's gonna come from your grade school um, science teacher that they've just kind of given us some ideas of what where you'd be best suited to be successful. Um, but a lot of that's gonna be 
based on student interests. In biology, one's the most accelerated of ninth grade sciences. It's going to require the most serious approach for students. I mean, being ready to take the material home every night, reviewing notes, um, doing outline lines, rereading the chapter, studying, staying on top of things um, from the start. It is the, the most serious of ninth grade science classes that we have to offer. Physical science is not far below. Um, the expectations are still high. It is going to be the introduction to physics, introduction to chemistry class, a little more math than in biology. Um, but, um, you know, it's still going to require students to be prepared to work every day and take some work home multiple times a week. Um, general science is mostly going to be done in the building. Um, it is our kind of introductory science survey. And then ag science are going to be for those students that have a real interest in agriculture. Um, the asterisks on the last two are just kind of as a reminder, they might not be meet the needs for um, college admissions purposes. Um, so sometimes students that take ag science will also take physical and science and biology um, if they would like to take on that challenge and the ag science class would be one of their electives. Um, if you're not happy with your child's um, science placement, uh, you know, I'm willing to discuss where would be they where they'd be best suited to start next year. Um, so please reach out to me. If you do make a change on this on the schedule, just be understand the expectations of moving up a class, right? If you're gonna if you're we've recommended biology or general, and you say no, I want my kid in, or or general or physical, and I want my kid in biology, just know that they really need to be prepared to put in the work um, from the start of the year so that they can have the success that we know they're they're capable of having. So course selection, kind of how does this work? So this is the yellow form. Like I said, we've made some recommendations in English, math, and science for you. Some people we've actually made some suggestions about the academic lab too. Um, how do you complete the form? Well, you transfer those, that information over to the grid in the upper right-hand corner. So English, you would write English one, and then the class number, which is 134. For math, you'd put the math class and the number. For science, science. For health and PE, again, health and PE. <coughs> and the numbers. And then you have five, six, and seven, which are the elective opportunities. Um, and again, that's going to be based on your child's interest, what they like, what they want to take, where you think they um, can be successful. You do the same thing. You grid the classes into those spaces and then the course numbers. We ask that you put two alternatives, Alt 1 and Alt 2, just in case we're not able to get your child into the first seven classes they, they would like. We're typically very successful at this and can probably get, you know, 95 to 99% of students into their first seven choices, but it's worth having um, an alternate just in case. Um, there's always a question about PE and taking weights. Ninth graders can get in weights, but I would encourage you to, to sign your child up for nine, nine, 10 PE first. And then if we have space in the weights class, once they start PE, they can ask Mr. Stewart, Mrs. Clays, uh, Mrs. Meath, Mr. Gerke, hey, can I get into weights? I've never had them turn a student away. But I know that at least initially, um, we, we do fill those classes with seniors, juniors, and sophomores. And selfishly, it's easier to schedule um, those students into driver's ed and health if we have them in 9, 10 PE because they typically go together. Um, so once you complete the form and you put the classes up in the corner, you go ahead and sign it. Also, if you're interested in your child taking driver's ed, I think I have a little blurb on this later, so I might double up. You mark the block at the end. Yes, I want my child to participate in driver's ed if eligible. No, I don't. And then please put their birth date because that's how we make the decision who gets into driver's ed first. As far as the form, um, when and where is it due, we ask that you turn it into your grade school office um, by the end of this week. Again, this is um, the week of February 22nd, 2021. Um, so if you could turn it into your grade school office, that'd be great. If for some reason, you're, if your child is remote or if you um, would like to, you can always scan it, take a picture and email it to me and I can um, get it entered that way as well. A little bit about what we do in our guidance office. You know, we, we want to tell you that we're always available for questions and, and um, meetings, either with you or with your children. Um, we really want to assist them in preparing for their future so they can have a successful high school career and then beyond. Um, we want to answer any questions, help them with any struggles they may be having when in high school. So, you know, stay engaged. We will have individual and group meetings. We have multiple group meetings, either with classroom groups or with the entire um, grade level. Um, each year, but we also look, our goal is also to meet with each of your children at least once, if not twice or more times individually. There are students that we talk to regularly um, for a variety of reasons. Um, and so if your child needs any support or help or has any questions, send them our way. We do some assessment preparation. Again, you know, standardized assessments are still the way of the world. Um, so we still do all that stuff out of our office. 
um, have those college and career discussions, and then provide information about outside camps, enrichment opportunities, summer jobs, summer internships, things like that. Last part I have is just encourage your children to get involved. It makes school so much better, whether it's athletics, whether it's music or clubs or the drama, the school play, um, community service, get involved in something. Um, it'll make the day to day of school so much better. I'm sure most of your children can attest to that this year um, when school wasn't having those types of activities. It definitely made for long, long school days. Last four things, just again, remember um, the registration requirements that you'll have to turn in the first couple days of June in, in person, and then in May, you'll have to do the online registration process through Teacheries. Um, if you have questions, again, don't hesitate to reach out to us and we can put you in, in touch with people. Um, fees can be paid either online through your Teacheries program or in person. The last thing is driver's ed. Um, we do our best to get a ninth graders in driver's ed because they have to hold their permit for nine months. So again, don't forget to fill that out on the bottom of your form if that's something you'd like for your child to be able to participate in as a ninth grader. We schedule it out of their PE class. Um, so if they have PE, um, we can schedule driver's ed out of that hour and make it work. If your a child's in band and you still want them to take driver's ed during the school year, we do ask that they have a study hall um, so that we don't have to pull them out of an academic class um, or band to take the driver's ed class. So um, I know that's not always something that uh, is ideal, but what happens a lot of times with students in band is they'll take health one semester and then the other semester they'll take the study hall driver's ed combo um, to fit that into the schedule nice and clean. Freshman open house, like I said, I don't know that we're going to have one. If we do, we will definitely reach out and let everybody know as soon as it's possible, if it's possible. And then the last thing I'd have to say is visit our website, reach out to us. Um, Mrs. Miner does a great job of keeping our guidance component of our website open. Um, it is, uh, you know, underneath the tab, I'll try to pull it up here in a second. Um, but definitely, if you have any questions after you watch this video, please, please, please do not hesitate to call me or send me an email. I will do everything I can to help make this transition as smooth as possible. Um, all right, we're gonna see if this works, if this is still sharing this page. Hopefully it is, if not, I'm gonna talk over it. But this is our school website. Um, You'll look here. Okay. You'll look here at this website. You'll see academics up here at the top. Um, if you click on it, if you can get it to work, there it is. And you click on guidance, and that will be the, the tab that Mrs. Meyer and I maintain. Again, I would say that she does a lot more of this work than I do. Um, so I will give all credit to her. But here's all sorts of great information, whether it's um, upcoming college visits and events, whether it's sending a transcript as a junior or senior, planning for high school, looking at our dual credit options, uh, planning for high, post high school, um, like I said, college visits, eligibility information, summer camp, summer enrichment, those graduation requirements, um, the course catalog that I referenced earlier, so you can get on and actually look at the, the courses and what we have to offer. And then as a senior, the scholarship page that Mrs. Miner does a great job of maintaining so that there are great scholarship opportunities out there. Um, so that is what I have for this afternoon. Again, I wanted to thank you all for listening. If you're watching this for a second time, I'm sure it was as riveting as the first time. If you're just catching it for the first time, thank you for, for watching. And again, please don't hesitate to reach out to me if you have any questions, um, whether it's now, whether it's later, um, give me a call, send me an email at any point in time, and I will do whatever I can to help you and your, your child be successful. Thanks. Have a great day.